a gigabyte grizzly bro human and this is a messed up time we live in so i need you all to do me a favor wear your mask like this not like this or like this or like this like this wear your mask it's for your safety and mine because if i see you without one i'm gonna pump kick a mask onto your face got it announcement from Benjamin C. Steele talking to you about wearing a mask. Not this one, but this one. With everything going on right now with this pandemic, you need to wear a mask. My mask is for your safety. Your mask is for mine. Now, I don't care what your uncle's, brother's, best friend's, mailman's, roommate from college put on social media. Chances are they didn't think it through and there's a very better than average chance that they're an idiot. So when you go outside, you put on your little mask over your face, put the little straps around your ears, and we're all going to be a lot safer. This is 18. Mercer, one half of the Tag Team Champions. I'm here to tell you that if you want to be a champion, if you want to survive this thing, wear your freaking mask, okay? It comes in all different colors. You can get Eclipse Blue, JC White and Black, or even hell, Blue and Gold. But guys, please, also remember, please, it goes over the nose. Over the nose. Thank you.
for a foot or an inch, yeah, I fight for you all. Is the truth in a mean, yeah, I fight for referee. What's up? It's the Gigabyte Grizzly Brohemian, and this is a messed up time we live in, so I need you all to do me a favor. Wear your mask. Like this? Not like this? Or like this? Or like this? Like this? Wear your mask. It's for your safety and mine. Because if I see you without one, I'm going to pump kick a mask onto your face. Got it? announcement from Benjamin C. Steele talking to you about wearing a mask.
Mercer, one half of the Tag Team Champions. I'm here to tell you that if you want to be a champion, if you want to survive this thing, wear your freaking mask, okay? It comes in all different colors. You can get Eclipse Blue, JC White and Black, or even hell, Blue and Gold. Guys, please, also remember, please, it goes over the nose. Over the nose. Thank you. show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Just pro wrestling news podcast. No filler, no pop-ups. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Monday Mayhem Warriors. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk professionalized wrestling. And I am. No, no, there he goes. There's back. There it is. Sorry, I hit a, I hit a, I hit a thing. Um, and we disappeared for a moment. Uh, but I am hot off of a, a live jazz music festival. I actually had a lot of fun uh, visiting our friends at BPEP out there, uh, the Black uh, Political Empowerment Project. Uh, we, we did a live stream actually for them last year on their jazz event, so it was really nice of them to invite me out to see what it looks like when people are present for it in the audience. So uh, a lot of fun there. But we have with us, first of all, from Beacon, New York, he's the only mayor with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Hi, uh, you may know me from RJ City's Instagram. Yeah, apparently now. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, all, also, playing the role of Mad Mike tonight was Alexa Bliss. Oh, yeah, really? I saw I saw a bit of Ooh. the end. I saw a bit of the end. Raw is not uh, anything. I, I, I left the event around a little bit before 9 o'clock. Um, and, uh, just so I could get back here to the studio and I had to, I wanted to still, we're still kind of working through some, like some, some of the new setup and, uh, you know, I wanted to spend some time on that call of elevation and like the last half hour raw, maybe, uh, actually, uh 20, you, 20 you minutes. Missed, you missed some good stuff. Did I, did I? Well, that's what you, yeah, I mean, for. you know, and that's for not you, a perfect show. that's for you to inform me about during this show now, Mike. Also yeah, with I us, mean, yeah. with all the information, including which Yano match to watch from this weekend at the G1, it is mainstream Matt of just pro wrestling news.com. It's a trick question, Sorg. There was only one Yano match over yeah, the weekend. Yeah, I, I realized that halfway but through saying that the was comment. That yeah, definitely yeah. the one. That was that so. was the one. That was definitely the one. So, and it was it was uh, Kenta and Yano. Hello, uh, I have watched yeah. um, um, one and a half episodes of G One, and I watched the New Japan Strong. So, uh, you know. Oh, we should get into that in a little bit. Yeah, dude, fan strong. Some something else right now. That's that's. Most of them are very positive. So. Oh, they are very positive. I think it was their first one with the crowd. I am in for New Japan Strong now on Saturday nights because there's too much wrestling on Sunday nights now. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, well, uh, well okay. First of all. I brought back something because I'm mad at a certain professional wrestling organization. Okay, particularly, uh -oh. but particularly their app that charged me for a month and tells me I have no subscription when I went to go watch <laughs> their recent special pay per view over the past weekend, and it was like, hey, we, you, nah, this is handled by Apple. So I brought back a special "fuck that Al" oh, T-shirt. Yes, you like that. <laughs> You like that? How you like it, Impact Plus? Huh? I'm trying to support you. Friends of the show are on there. 
I've given you money. You've been getting email. You've been giving me emails from HTNet. I don't understand that. Why is HTNet email? I thought it was a scam. But turns out, turns out they think I haven't paid them in the last month. And I'm kind of pissed about it. I want to watch Sorg? Christian Cage wrestle, damn it. Sorg, Sorg. <laughs> As always. Fuck TNA. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. No. <laughs> no, no, Mike. You're wearing no, the Mike. shirt. No, Mike. It's the app. It's insane. It's just, it's pissed me off for the last Ford, fucking time. It's the company. I've canceled my subscription. They, I've the canceled my subscription. The is held together no. by WD-40 and Scotch. No, no, Mike. No. Well, last time I checked, WD-40 is not an adhesive. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Matt. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, no. You this should, company has been making gator glue. This company has been making strides as a product, but they're, they can't get their shit together on the app, which I think is on the same damn play. It's fight doing that. I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't work. Nobody Chromecast, knows. Sorry. Chromecast Sorry. doesn't Sorry. Good, listen. Chromecast doesn't work on the Impact app or the Ring of Honor app. Thankfully, there's actually an Apple TV app, and and hey. and the and the hey. browser works great. But, uh, you know, maybe New Japan has the right idea by not actually doing a full-fledged app and just giving you a weird hey, Chromecast Sork. situation, right? Hmm. This is why I, I just watch wrestling on my television. Hey, you know what, Mike? Some of us... It's... If I just watched... If I just watched the wrestling that's on your television, and then and if this is the case, I don't know how you watch pay-per-views at all. Uh, this I have Peacock on my television. Oh, you have Peacock on your television. How adorable, Mike. Anyways, um, but no, that's... that's uh, and I also bought the last AEW pay-per-view, oh, so boy. kindly oh, fuck boy. off. Oh, man, Mike man. consumes his wrestling like a 50-year-old man. Yeah, apparently, that's fine. apparently, and he misses out on so much good stuff. But no, Hey, I, you know what? But at least I don't inadvertently not get charged for pay-per-view I wanted to buy. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't a pay-per-view. It's a monthly subscription. So it's a whole seven. Okay. It's a whole seven ninety nine that's been wasted here on Impact Wrestling, okay? And still uh, overcharged. I, 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 well, that's okay because apparently I can get <laughs> most of the same stuff for five ninety nine or four ninety nine over on the YouTube <laughs> membership. So um, maybe we'll try that. I don't know. So a cut's gonna go to uh, Google instead of uh, Apple on that one. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm still dismayed when I find time and I want to watch this pay per view. Probably not before tomorrow's show at this point because I'm out Wait, of so you haven't watched it yet? No, I haven't watched Victory Road yet. Oh. I couldn't watch it. That's the whole point of wearing the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey. Yeah. yeah. Good. You cool. don't yeah. I you don't understand the dance I do glossing over the sections of just pro wrestling news when I'm editing to not get spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't help it, but I heard it there. I heard Alexander and Saban was great. So I, I can't I wait. Yet, I can't wait to get. I a even to I even know it. what happened on that paper. I can't I wait. Watch it. Can't wait to get it because you listen to just pro wrestling news. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, I uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm so gonna... ask me about my night. Ask me about my night. Matt. Hey Matt, how, how was, was your night? night? Oh, well, I wasn't at home watching uh, watching Raw for most of the night because tonight I gotta put on my hat here. Oh, I can't do this because I gotta do this thing. Okay. Oh no boy, here we go. Here. We, okay. we got props. Got put on my hat because tonight I was uh, uh, coaching uh, my son's 12 and under youth baseball team. <laughs> and tonight, after a series of practices, tonight was the first game. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. This is where we find out. We find out How what really go. happens, huh? Uh, we lost. Oh. It was 16 to Four, I think, somewhere Ooh. around that line. Okay. Ooh, that's that's not what um, we're here. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little pitching, uh, some control issues uh, for the pitching, uh, as sometimes happens in these uh, twelve and under uh, youth baseball games. You can find yourself caught in a vortex of bases on balls that goes mm -hmm. on forever and ever and ever and ever on balls. Uh, oh, and I am, no. I am, if nothing, a patient man. Mm -hmm. uh so uh yeah so, so, so there's there a lot of rope uh for these pitchers to go out there and just kind of do their thing okay and hopefully uh work their way through it but i admire uh the perseverance of the kids the children played hard uh there were some nice moments uh we've got to work on the rules for the bach which is uh, a fun new addition 
uh, this year as the kids have leveled up. Wow, wow they're, do- they're doing box in, in that level. They're doing box. Cool. They're doing stolen wow. bases. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're trying to keep guys from we're, we're running pickoffs. And uh, but uh, I, I know that you guys wanted to like um, wanted some updates on how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, right. we, took, we took an L. Uh, we're back at it on Wednesday. The great thing about baseball is that the games come fast. So you wash it off, you come back the next uh, come back in two days to play again. So uh, if you want to ask me, I'll, I'll take a question from the reporters here and then uh, I'll try to ask answer it in the most baseball manager way possible. If you feel like um, Matt, I, I just um, I know we, we were giving you assignments to be like different baseball managers each week. I feel like uh, your team needs a little bit more um, oomph a- after their first loss. You know, long season, long season, a lot of games to play. Um, so I, I, I'm going to recommend that you start coaching in the style of Mr. Burns from mm, Homer yes. at the Bat. I, I, I will embrace that mm-hmm. if only to yell at my yell at the players uh facial hair yes. the lack thereof let's work on keep those sideburns up mattingly mm-hmm. and uh yeah and, and if i were They'll going so to, like you better than Steinbrenner. uh and and if i were to say that i have adopt if i adopted any um fictional baseball manager uh for tonight's game it would definitely be tom hanks during the first half of a league of their own Ooh. when he's drunk and useless mm. that was kind of me mm. uh okay. fumbling a little fumbling around of uh, I, I went to great pains to try to uh, prepare the lineup ahead of time and all the defensive positionings inning by inning. And then uh, we had like three extra kids show up that I wasn't expecting. And I had to like reorganize the whole thing on the fly. So like during the first inning, I'm like trying to rework this lineup. Okay, so I was so, drunk so, Tom so Hanks. You were, so you were frazzled. I was a little, that's, that's um, fine. That's fine. Maybe, a little maybe, caught off. Uh, maybe this caught is an off opportunity. Guard. But you know what? Uh, you know, uh, one game at a time. Uh, it's just one game. It's a long 178 loss. games. Long 178, or long. perhaps less than that games. And um, <laughs> you know we're gonna get back out there on Wednesday, and uh, we're gonna get a uh, different couple of uh, different pitchers on the mound, get a look at them. Uh, learned a lot about our team. Uh, like some of the uh, like some of the the uh, the fight in our team. Some of the resolve it was very very strong. So uh, uh, we're gonna come back on Wednesday. We're gonna hope for uh, some better results. And uh, hopefully right. we'll do better. Good, good, good. Well, maybe it's an opportunity here for you to have like some mayhem show guest coaches. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Who wants to go? Who would like to come down and? Uh... I mean, maybe some. Um, some I, of the I think I think Brohemoth would be a, a guest third base, third base coach. coach. You know, I would be a wonderful have an third base coach. coach. Oh, this as is a an third base coach. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I mean, uh, Noir as a third base coach. Ghost, oh, well, ghost, coach, yeah, uh, coach, third yeah. base, third base, ghost. ghost. That yeah, right. I got, I got you. Um, right. Do you think, uh, you think we could get the gavel, David Lawless, oh, in to help you argue, bars, argue balls and strikes? You yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, 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 we got you hosed to... on a call. We got hosed on a call. <laughs> okay, and for the first time in my youth baseball managerial career, I got to yell, "You're killing me, Blue." <laughs> right at the umpire, he was right there in front of me. He heard it, and I'm like, did, "Let's call." You... And I and I followed it up with, "Let's call New York and have them take a look at it." And he laughed again. So did you start kicking dirt? I'm not there yet. Okay. We'll, 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 okay. You know, I, I don't, when we argue balls and strikes, and he throws me out of the game, then we'll kick dirt. This okay. was just a blown call. M- Matt, me Matt. Him know. By the way, if you do get to a point where you get kicked out, there is a precedence that we expect you to live up to. You have to run to whatever base it was, pick up the base, and walk away with it. I would tote it away like I'm Lloyd McClendon. Yeah, I don't know. All right, hear that or hear that look- or or pull a Malachi Black and just sit crisscross applesauce right on the base until the call is what you would like it to be. <laughs> Maybe I'll do snow angels in the dirt. I like the snow <laughs> angels. I like the snow angels. That one. Yes. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I always wrestling tonight. Uh, I did watch Elevation, uh, and and, <sighs> and and enjoyed Elevation. Oh, oh, let let me have this, Mike. Let, let, me, 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 me and Matt are gonna have this conversation. I want to say good things about Raw. Raw was actually pretty good. Okay, well, I'm just getting the Elevation stuff out of the way, so you guys can All talk right. about Raw. So, um, we the 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 biggest thing was uh, uh, Joey Janela and uh, and uh, Sunny Kiss. 
and Joey's new <laughs> friend uh, getting involved there. It's probably the biggest development there. Um, but uh, who's uh, Joey's new friend? I, I can't. Kayla Rossi. Kayla Rossi. That's right. Um, she did. She did like a standing back. So they put a chair on Sonny's back, and she did like a standing backflip into a stomp on the chair. Ooh, it okay. was impressive. It was impressive. And she is like buff too, you know. She's not like okay. some little, you know, cheerleader Alexa Bliss waif doing this thing, right? So like it's it was impressive. Uh oh, I just woke up Echo. Sorry. That uh, so, sorry, sorry, room. Um anyways, but no, yeah, so it was some good stuff there. And uh and uh and I just I you know you know, Kingston telling Tony he'll go far in this business is always fun. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, you listen for yeah, just listen for Eddie Kingston. And if you think you think Chris, I, I'm sorry, I thought the Echo was playing music now. Um, if you think uh, Chris Jericho uh, yelling on uh, on Rampage is something, um, I think Kenny's only got one mode. Uh, so, <laughs> so we'll go with that. Uh, anyways. So, I mean, that's my elevation report. It was fun. It was a good watch. It was good to have on while I was tinkering with stuff, like as usual, right? So, oh, she's definitely mm -hmm. playing with Alexa, stop. There we go. Um, so, what happened? And, on playing, were that and playing, the on of, playing the role of Charlotte tonight will be Sorg. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, what did happen on Raw tonight? Is there anything worth me uh, checking this out? And should I be tuning into this pay per view or whatever <sighs> okay. we call it these days? Uh, all right. Uh, I I'll start with. There was a lot of women's segments on the show tonight, which is good. Um, I wish the matches were a touch longer. Okay. The matches were not very long. We have new women's tag team champions. Oh. Uh huh. Okay. In uh in uh Neke and Rhea. Um, Sorg, you do have to watch the Alexa Bliss and Charlotte segment. Mm. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy, they got a little caddy, and it was pretty good. Okay, <laughs> pretty pretty good. I I enjoyed it a great deal. Uh, Alexa has basically like she was Matt. Would you say like a, a hair away from breaking into Get Out of Here, Charlotte? You would know better than me. So oh oh, you didn't see okay you. okay you, okay um one. yeah yeah Alexa was a stone throw away from breaking into full out. Get out of here, Charlotte. Like, just basically parroting everything that we've said about Charlotte for the past year and a half or so. Wow. Uh, it was, Maybe we it should was... grab that YouTube and add her. So Honestly? That it's out there. It's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, it, was, it was a good segment. And Charlotte, you know, Charlotte bit back and she went after Alexa's, you know, character and all that stuff. And it, it was it was a good segment. And then, you know, they brawled a little bit. And I, I'm excited for that match uh, on Sunday. We opened Sword, believe it or not, with the New Day versus the Bloodline. Ooh. Oh, and wow. So this, believe... we were in full-on crossover tonight, huh? Oh, yeah. It's going to be crossover till the pay-per-view, mm. till, till the draft, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, But it ended with... <laughs> It was a little weird how it ended because Bobby Lashley came out and attacked people, but the ref didn't call for a DQ for mm -hmm, some reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. So so Reigns pinned Woods. So technically the Bloodline won, even though it should have been a DQ. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Jeff Hardy is now added to the, the U.S. title match. So it's Sheamus, Hardy, and Priest at Extreme Rules. Um. There, there was uh, some stuff with uh, AJ and Randy. I'll be honest, I don't know what it was. I was eating dinner at the time, so I didn't get to fully catch up on what that was. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, and then, uh, you know, Big E was pissed that Lashley attacked all of New Day. Reigns was pissed that Lashley attacked all of the Bloodline. So the main event was uh, Lashley versus Reigns versus Big E, and it was really fucking good. Just for, just for kicks? <laughs> Yeah, I did yeah. catch it, and it was very good. Yeah, stuff I was seeing looked pretty good there. So yeah, it it was it was a wonderful uh, main event. Um, it, it was good times, good times. Uh, it's it's weird because 
we're going into Extreme Rules not having a WWE title match. But I'm assuming that they'll book Big E versus Lashley. Something on Extreme Friday. Rules. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that seems obvious. So, wait, wait what are, where are we at with matches for that? I don't, like, you know, in general. Like, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, they've got, like, uh, they've got, like, at least six matches. Announced. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring up, I'll bring up the deal. Yeah, they've got, too. they're doing uh, Reigns versus Balor. They're doing Charlotte Reigns versus, versus Alexa. They're doing Becky versus Bianca. Yep. There is a, no, there isn't. Wait, um. Uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, versus Ale- Charlotte versus Alexa, Priest versus Hardy versus Sheamus. There's a uh, SmackDown tag title match. They're doing Usos versus Usos Street, versus Profits. Street Profits again. Yeah, which will most likely be some kind of gimmick match. Yeah, you, you that your demon versus Reigns. Your demon versus Reigns is obviously the biggest thing here, right? It's Extreme so, Rules. Yeah, it's so. extreme yeah, and there's rules, no yeah. Extreme Rules. No, uh, matches Rain- announced yet. Right? Reigns versus Demon is Extreme Rules now. Oh, is it now? Okay, it was just announced after Raw went off the air. And uh, we're also getting Liv Morgan versus Carmella. So I- I'm okay with that. That's three women's matches on a pay-per-view. I'm, I'm down I, for it. I cannot. I, I, I really expect that last one to end up on a pre-show, to be honest. Potentially. But Potentially. still, I- I'll still take there. it. No, wait a minute. But then we have arguments about whether they count as a pay-per-view match if they're on the it pre-show. It doesn't count, but it's still booked. And also, why do I have glitter in my beard? You see this thing? What's happening? Uh, that's right a, that's a question you need to I ask. I don't remember glitter at this show people. tonight. What the hell is going on? I didn't even Sorry, see glit- the, the run. Glitter is the her- glitter is the herpes of craft supplies. Is it just like do I still have glitter on me from ah. a show two weeks ago? What's happening? Yes. Oh, Sorg. Yeah, Sorg, that stays with you. You still you still have glitter on you from second grade. So is that oh, I'm there, telling you, there's still some in my lungs from that one ICP show in about 20 years ago. Um, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that that's what this cough is. For. I mean, if that if you inhaled that glitter twenty oh. years ago, oh, I definitely mm-hmm. did. It's a good chance that it's just been existing inside your body for the past twenty years, and just kind of like spurts out every once in a while based on your body position or you know yeah. a cough or yeah. a sneeze somewhere, or something like that. Somewhere, so. somewhere, somewhere. ICP glitter is forever. Somewhere <laughs> in the crevices of my body is just a pocket of glitter and diet fago. Uh, okay. Um, anyways, well, that that's an idea. Oh, and, and Biggie, Biggie also opened the show, and um, he didn't say Brody by name, but uh, he he thanked Brody for support, and the crowd did chant Brody a little bit, so that was very nice. Cool. Oh, that, that yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because I mean, I know there was something. Um, well, I know, I know Bryce said something this week uh, as well on Twitter, uh, congratulating yeah. him too. So, like all around. So yeah, that's great. That's great. So. But yeah, Raw was a decent show. Pretty yeah. decent show. Uh, you know, has its has its flaws. Well, just like uh, all shows do. Oh, oh, I forgot. Mm. Uh, Shayna beat the fuck out of Nia Jax. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Nia's probably going away for a spell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Shayna Shayna basically like broke Nia's arm. Shit. Like, 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 like put Pentagon, her hands, like Pentagon her hand Junior style, in the handle of the ring steps <gasps> and stomped on it. No, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. That like that was a short match. It was a Shayna squash, but it was pretty fun. <laughs> it was pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. Definitely. But, Jeez. But, uh, so yeah, you're telling me I mean, uh, worth worth pulling up the YouTube clips on this one. Oh yeah, definitely. So I mean, I, I think that's where I'm at. I, I, I you know, and, and it's the, I, it's a little bit of the Ring of Honor philosophy because Ring of Honor, oh, an impact too, fucking impact. Um, you know, it, <laughs> it, I'm not following the week by week show because I only have so much bandwidth, right? Uh, so, but I'm going to check in for the pay per views, and uh, and 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 that's that's worked out pretty well so far in both companies until now. Um, so I, I <laughs> WWE it kind of is turning into that for me like the week the week doesn't seem to matter to me you know so like raw, why, why raw not? is always a slot why but not? honestly i, I know, honestly, and I know so they're I, they're gearing up for stuff sure i'd, I'd watch it like, i don't know this... I'd, I, I'd rather i'd rather keep up with the g1 to be honest okay like this okay. is like uh, something happens like, like <laughs> you know, I mean, I did shows. just explain to you a lot of stuff happened. Yes, yes, but I don't know if I and, and you know me, 
Normally, I'm the guy that says nothing happened. And I'm still not sure if I care that it happened is the problem. All right. So, okay. like, they've just, they've just gnawed at me for so long. The, so The bloodline I, versus I, I like that the, the um, you know, that, that Raw seemed to be on a better track because I caught um, probably the second half of uh, SmackDown on Friday, and that was a, just an empty... Yeah. Void of nothingness on Friday well, night, where there was yeah. I pick nothing. A, I pick like a, it, it was just this classic episode where you just feel like, you know, this this isn't going anywhere. They're just well, I mean, marking the, the time thing... and just keeping, you know, pots boiling, you know, it, it, until they are ready to pull the trigger on on the next thing. So, because because the the problem SmackDown has right now is that they were trying to build a match with Reigns and Balor. But we already have Reigns versus Brock booked, mm -hmm. so that's that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, they got that, that little they into. got that little double whammy issue, right? Although Demon has Demon lost as the Demon, uh, not in WWE proper. He has mm -hmm. an NXT, mm -hmm. but he's never been pinned. Mm -hmm. um, okay. As okay. far as I can, I'm trying to remember if because the only person to beat the loss is uh, Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think you're thinking of a cage match. Yeah, it was a steel cage match, but I don't remember if Joe escaped or if he made Balor tap. Hmm. I want to um, say that okay. he, he hit, hit him with a muscle buster, but he hit maybe a not. super. He hit a super mu muscle buster. Okay, so muscle buster off the top rope. So really, he like broke out the big guns to beat the demon. Yeah, which is fine. But yeah, that's I, the um, only that's the only loss on record for the demon. I. I you know, I'm I'm looking at what they did tonight on Raw, and I I guess they feel like they need a, a strong main event. But you know, New Day versus the Bloodline for me would have been at least as compelling as Balor versus Reigns for a main event for Extreme Rules. I could have yeah, gotten they should have just that. done that Extreme Rules. Style. Of course, like... you're doing your inner promotional. <laughs> battle like a month before survivor series but yeah you know, yeah who, so like, who cares you yeah. know it's fine the one time a year the one time a year um <laughs> apart from all those other times but yeah. see the thing is before survivor series we got a draft mm -hmm. yeah this is so I, who the I, hell I mean, knows the other happen. thing too is that Which... they were into this last year they do the draft you, you know the, you spend all this time kind of getting used to the alignments of the different wrestlers and then they draft they shuffle the deck and then these these reshuffled rosters, you know, basically declare blood feud on each other for their new <laughs> show that they've been on for a week. Um, hey, hey, Matt, Matt, are we gonna do another draft special? Why not? Let's go. I, I don't even know what the rules are gonna be. Good but luck. Good luck. We, we we should absolutely do Jeez. that. Uh, that that was that was fun last time. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Um, so uh, George, you mentioned the G one. I did mention the G one. I've you been know, enjoying um, the G1. I'm about, like I say, I'm a, I'm a G1 and a half into it. Good oh for you. Boy, I'm proud of you. Um, I am both G1 in plus a New Japan Strong in. I, you know, I, I haven't been too deep into New Japan lately because of, uh, at least when it comes to what's happening back in Japan. Uh, because, you know, honestly, you know, creatively, it's been a little bit stagnant <laughs> lately. They're just, mm -hmm. they're not, you know, a lot of, um, it's not a very dynamic um, thing to follow at the moment. But the nice Ooh. thing about the G1 is that um, there is a purpose behind everything. And it's fun to watch uh, the tournament play out because it is such a, it's, it's such an intricate little game of booking, you know, peace moving, stuff like that. So it, it's exciting to watch. So, Sorg, let me just ask you the, the, the one most important question when it comes to the G1, aside from... Did you see Yano versus Kenta? Oh, did I? Um, of which you and I, you and I are the only, are, are the last two uh, wrestling fans who still like watching Yano matches. By the I way. love it. I love it. There All were, these new there Japan long timers think they're too good for Toru Yano. Yes. But I know the truth. That That's man is right. great. And I love they, watching his matches. Wait, first of all, they found tape on both of them in their gear, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly. Yes. So they, yes, so, I love when the, the only thing better. Then the referee checking the wrestlers before the matches begin is when the referee checks the wrestlers and finds stuff. That's mm -hmm. the yes. best. When yes. it's like, what's this? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, finding a roll of tape on Yano, and then Yano insists they check Kenta, and then Kenta turns out Kenta had a roll of tape on him too. So, so they end up fighting to the stage, which I also appreciate. Like we do have a stage set up for these shows, right? Um, they're yep. they're in one of the bigger venues, and they fight to the stage and in the piping, you know, that, that kind of piping lattice kind of thing that's usually used on wrestling stages. Like th he finds more tape. Yano mm -hmm. takes it, throws it in the crowd, but there's yeah. another pack of tape hidden in the set again and it ends up oh, just... taping Yano into. And I also love every time Yano does something illegal, Kevin Kelly's uh, monitor goes out. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I, I know. Like, I, I, just, I should get, I, I, should get I love this the, so much. I should get, Sick of that bit. Yes. But like every time he winds up for a low blow, Kevin Kelly is just immediately like, What? My monitor went out. Yeah. What happened? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's funny every time to me. But you know, yes. what can I say? I'm, I'm a support. We're here support. for the hit. But yeah, I, I like the I, I like the um two master villains at work mm -hmm. trying to out villain each other. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, it's a good time. Those are always good ones. Um, um I right, the the other important question which I glossed over, did you watch Shingo Takagi versus Tomohiro Ishii. The problem is I watched that and it was the main event of night one of G1. And Ishii is the big badass. Like, like that's how I, how I was in, 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 in introduced to um, Suzuki that we all know now uh, from mm -hmm. AEW. Uh, was Ishii and him just clubbering the shit out of each other. And man, am I now sold on Shingo as champion. <laughs> yeah, Shingo's Holy a man. shit. There's... They're... I'm glad you I'm glad you're one over. Yes, uh, Ishii yes. is for those who don't get into the new Japan quite as much. Ishii and Ishii matches are basically exactly what your brain imagines a new Japan match is. It's just, you know, forearms and headbutts and fighting spirit and just mean guy matches uh clobbering each other. It's lariats and suplexes and headbutts and just Rough and tough, strong dudes, mean guys, as I said. Mm -hmm. There's a great moment in this match where they are they are like going like they're doing like a full blown fighting spirit sequence. Mm -hmm. And it's like clothesline, dude pops up, clotheslines the other guy, dude pops up, suplex, dude pops up, suplexes the other guy, dude pops up. Ishii finally gets like Hit with like one more clothesline. They do this like they go through this like seven move. They go through like seven moves like this, and Ishii gets knocked down with a clothesline. Acts like he's gonna get up and like continue the fight. The continue with the fighting spirit, and it is as if his body stops on him as he's starting to get up, and he kind of like teeters and he just kind of like tumbles over. It's so goddamn good. It's just. So good. That man is great, and you're right about Shingo is brilliant. Um, that the match is the match is amazing. There's a there's actually it appears there's a superplex uh, during this match that goes awry, mm -hmm. and for one reason or another, uh, they take a kind of a scary tumble off the top rope. Uh, but Ishii takes it from there. And it, you, typically, you kind of roll your eyes when you see wrestlers, you know, repeat the spot when they blow the spot, and then they repeat the spot. This they repeat the spot, but the way Ishii did, did it was that I'm so pissed off, I'm putting you back on this top rope, and we're doing this damn move. Um, and uh, and and obviously they uh, they were able to hit it the second time. Uh, amazing match, and um, it, 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 it's a shame it overshadowed. Uh, another match on that card that a lot of people actually, I'm sure there are fans who like this match more than Shingo Ishii, but the uh, Naito Zack Sabre Jr. match is great too. Um, especially if you're into that Zack Sabre Jr. kind of uh, so uh, aesthetic for your matches. That match was great too. And uh, that was a there's, great there's... opening night. There was a monster yes. upset on that show. Yes. Um, with the, uh, God, I can't barely even say it. But uh Yujiro Takahashi beating Kota Ibushi. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say it one more time. That's just what I say. Take a deep breath. Yujiro Takahashi beat Kota Ibushi. 
Wow. And it wasn't even that dirty. It was <laughs> kind of clean. It was pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah. the hell's going on out here <laughs> yeah yeah we're setting the stage here aren't we um the other one that really uh, it was wa- the first match on the show <laughs> first match of the g1 right so, out of the gate so the other one that really won me like, over and he ended up losing tama tonga and i've been a fan of tama tonga grows a destiny for for about a year now um just just more and more growing on me uh it, and he had a match with sonata and i loved even in the commentary they're talking about like yeah you don't know what version of sonata you're gonna get is he like like you know a level sonata or is he like b minus sonata so like they're complete <laughs> they're completely admitting that sonata like ah he kind of goes back and forth and whether it gives a shit or not right so they, they should uh, call they should like... call the lesser version tna sonata oh my god um <laughs> was there a ten- <laughs> yeah, was he in tna yeah well like, they've kind of like made this into part of his character that like you know, yeah sonata yeah. if he's on he can beat anybody but yeah. if he's not on you know i think uh i left off they were they were just getting the introductions for goto and tai chi so uh, tell me, tell me, am I going to love this Chai Chi match or what? So uh, <laughs> it's pretty, kind of a pretty it's, good it's a by hit and miss for standards. Me. Yeah, I mean, you also get the full Tai Chi entrance. Oh, geez. Which well, is, um, I'm sitting there and I've been I've been watching it. I've been watching it uh, upstairs with the with the, with the since the lady is back. And uh, of course, who was it from the who has who has the, the bunny lady come out with them? That uh, would be Yujiro Takahashi. That was the ass Takahashi. clad. Yes, with her butt uh, hanging out. With the bunny ears come out with them, the yeah. kind of stripper dance. And she's like, what are we watching? I'm like, this is how they do in Japan, I guess. So <laughs> this, is, uh, uh, this is how this we Japan. I don't know. For many years. It's yeah, a cultural yeah. difference. I'm learning, okay? So... <laughs> um but that was fun uh so no it, it was good it's a fun show um for sure and then the strong so i go from the ishii main event to ishii in the opening match is strong <laughs> oh yeah versus alex coglin yes yes young Al- lion the getting alex, brutalized so alex great. coglin is a young lion still apparently yes. and yes. but he's he's doing his alex coglin challenge but he challenges He's, the likes of op- multiple open weight champion, five time open weight champion, current open weight, six time uh, champion, guy that clubbers the shit out of people, um, is very, very scary man, Ishii. And that's his thing. You know, I, I, I'm not all of them are, are that. Like, didn't he get like, didn't he get like a bushy or something before or, or something oh, crazy? Yeah, yeah. Alex Coglin is the dog chasing the truck down the road. <laughs> he is. Unfortunately, he caught an Ishii. So. Yeah, he caught an Ishii. Uh, I would have to check the results to see what his other matches have been. Uh, but yeah, he's been in classic, like biting off more than he can chew mode. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, that that was fun. The, he, the thing that stood out for me is just how effective i don't know how many people they had in that studio mm-hmm. but they made a lot of noise and yes it they did made it it added so much energy and i yes. can't help but compare it to what impact is doing in their studio setting mm-hmm. with their handful of fans and how it still feels like you know just like 10 people in there yeah i don't know how many people new japan had in their studios but it felt like they had at is least a that- hundred or so is that because Canadians are just overtly polite, so they're not very loud? No, they they don't record. No, no, no. Sc- well, Wait, oh, well, Scott first Wait. of all, you're not even you're not even updated on your digs because they've been recording in Nashville for like, they're, the they're last, recording like two years. Oh, okay. Well, so I, so so two just re- reload and insult Nashville now. You can go down. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they, I think they were in Nashville before COVID. So, um, yeah. So they're okay. in the studio. But they're in a okay. studio, much like the UK is doing. Yeah. Um. And uh, it, it's a nice setup, but it just it's just felt empty until they got the crowd in there. Um. And now Strong is recording in a studio currently. Uh. The, what, what we're seeing now was a studio taping in Long Island. Um. At Thunder something Long Studios. Long uh, Long Beach. Sorry. No. You, yeah. You've Beach. got it right. The Thunder Studios. The Thunder in Studios Long Beach. in Long Beach. Um. So so like. It, and and sorry to jump on you again, Sorg. But uh, they're they're taking this on the road. So mm-hmm. these upcoming shows that they've been talking about, they're going to Dallas, uh, Fort Worth Metroplex. They're going to Philly, and they're going to be recording more strong shows in front of more fans That's, in uh, different venues. That... This show is going to be feeling awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm excited, mm-hmm. and I know I 
I've said this before, so self-fulfilling prophecy, but I'm going to already, I'm going to pat myself on the back when I was telling you guys already that Impact and ROH better watch their back because New Japan is coming and they are most likely already passing them by. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. They are drawing houses. They are touring. They are putting on an exciting, dynamic TV product. They've got huge stars on their show. It's on. It, they, they better get moving. So, yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's, there you go. Yeah, uh, it, it is. No, I, I watched like I'm watching like the intro, and you said to watch the music video at the beginning of the G1. I have not yet. Um, Why no? Why I, I've had zero time since we talked this morning. Oh okay, gosh. we should all watch it together. I, We're I, all gonna watch it together I later. Might I might work too much? Um, I was watching some jazz, but anyways, <laughs> I'm watching the intro going into, and then the rest is strong. And I'm sitting there thinking, this show, if it got syndicated or something, like could be competitive to what, um, what's happening with um, um Ring, Ring of Honor. It's a comparable mm-hmm. if comparably better show this is not the same thing on the talent anything like that but it's compare and again i haven't seen the ring of honor shows tv shows with a crowd yet uh i've seen the pay-per-views which of course because those haven't happened yet they haven't Lord. happened yet okay so which i'm yeah. i'm not even i can't watch it i just i just can't you know i just i just want to put that era behind us and i know we're, we're getting through the last of the taping still um and i know there's some great stuff coming from impact that got taped this weekend with some friends of the show uh that's definitely worth checking out um so you know so so impact what's up what's going on what's going on with my subscription uh anyways we'll, we'll get that we'll get that <laughs> we'll get that figured out so i can watch my friends wrestle <laughs> so that's, Got it. that's it i just want to watch my friends wrestle okay and in order to do that i have to purchase every subscription to do that and and i'm trying okay i'm trying so <laughs> um anyways anyways but no yeah lady frost is a part of the the knockouts knockouts knockdown is that what it's called something like that like they, yes. it's going to be their women's show uh um, it is coming so. up on october 9th Yes, and I believe it was it was uh, I believe it was pre-recorded this past weekend. So uh, look out for is that going to be an impact? I that's got to be an impact plus special. That's an impact plus. Okay, yep. basically the impact plus specials, Mike. Since I know you're not on it lately, I know this is gonna. Oh, it's it's like they're one night only. It's their one night only. Oh, it, all yeah. of them are they're, they're basically one night only. Honestly, no, so... that one I will watch that because I heard um, yeah. Veda's on commentary, right? Veda, oh yeah, it's Veda. <laughs> yep. I, and I got to work yeah. with Veda. I, I mentioned this on Twitter, uh, I think, last night when I was dozing off. Uh, I, I worked with Veda. She did commentary for the Poly Cult. And she was mm-hmm. like, like she, like she she's the one that was like, oh, just put the camera on me, knowing we're on Twitch and live. And it's like, oh, just put the camera on me, and, and I'll, I'll just start talking. I'm just like, oh, that's fantastic. Yes, absolutely. We we will <laughs> use you. Absolutely. Though. Veda's, Veda's uh, I have worked with, I've worked on shows with her before, but I've never actually like worked directly interacted with her um and she was just wonderful and an absolute professional and i'm glad to see that I, she's getting i, some stuff I don't know on. why she's not like a lead commentator on AEW. a lead commentator? I, I have no idea why i have no idea because i i saw a couple episodes of either dark or dark elevation that yeah. she was on yeah. the commentary and she was Ooh, great and that was a year ago she's even better now right i think she yeah was, i'm sure i think she was I, I think the reason she's not still is because she was just starting then was not ready to keep going with them or maybe something with COVID held it back oh and, yeah. and like mark and, henry has years of commentary uh, i think um <laughs> I, I think i think veda made a decision fairly recently Mm-hmm. That this is something that she wants to commit to, right? Uh, I, and I, she's obviously doing that and doing it successfully. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out going forward. Because mm-hmm. you know, Impact wouldn't be stupid to grab her up for themselves either. Nope. For nope. full time. I mean, we all love Striker, oh, yeah, but Beta could definitely do that, and mm-hmm. you could slide Striker over to Color in three person booth. Yeah. So... <laughs> oh no, 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 no more three. Wait, is Delo still there? No more. Yeah, Delo's still there. Okay. Just slide out Delo and slide in Veda. Hey, in the oh, era man. of the four-person booth, three-person <laughs> booth, not so bad. It's so crowded at AIW. No, no, AW honestly, right they're now. both terrible. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> listen, I want to give a shout-out right now, okay? I want to give a shout-out, a respectful shout-out to Doc Doherty. 
over at RWA. Matt, you were there, although you, you, you listened to none of it because you were on camera, but you kept pointing the camera at him. The um, nonverbals were great. The nonverbals were fantastic. <laughs> and, and I loved how he did see where there was a second camera, and he would he would switch off and stuff. And he did have a little monitors that we set up for him. So, But, Doc, Joey Styles the shit out of that RWA show, Fall Free for All, this past weekend, which also included – so but we'll go we'll I'll get to what I include in a second. Um but I I I I just he was solid, he didn't lose his voice, there was no dead space, like noticeably. Like you like I'm impressed on, on, on what he did on that. I'm not that I didn't think he was capable, but but I don't think I've heard him do a solo like that for a while. And get the added pressure, like, hey, buddy, we're going to throw things on Twitch tonight because we're doing a tech test, right? Um, and he just took it in stride and did it and was a fucking pro at it. And I just want to give some shouts to Doc on that one. Um, he's been he's been killing on some stuff lately and really getting, I don't know, he's, he's I, I, a lot of guys, like, post-COVID, I from referees we talk to to like some people are just like like I'm I'm fucking going I'm we're get, we're not fucking around with our professional like our jobs anymore around professional wrestling and and, mm-hmm. and that's I mean it's wrestlers too but but I'm just saying even the other parts of the show like those guys and and production and things like that like people are like let's f and do this you know and it's, it's really really cool to see so I just wanted to throw that I, I, but but I also want to say we did have O'Shea Edwards on the on the show had a great match with John Roden one of our favorites um and we had a main event and and Matt I first of all Matt did not have to save uh, small children to my awareness this show or go under the ring during a battle royal uh and but you did get i was only nearly struck by a person three or four times although he did have so so the main event was j-rock daddy and uh and uh brian johnson of ring of honor um and uh that was a pleasure to have him there (laughs) so you want to you want to share brian johnson's dirty secret no, I'm nice not guy. I don't Pretty know. Nice I guy. wasn't going to. Well, literally, he's backstage all <laughs> night, and and we're interacting just generally, right? Just just from production aspect and everything like that, and and it just like the mind divorces, and he comes out and cuts a promo on Wes Newton. And if you've seen a Brian Johnson promo, it's usually an incendiary. <laughs> incendiary. I'm not saying that right. Incendiary. Incendiary. It's an incendiary promo about wherever the hell they are usually. Like a classically uh, F you promo. And I'm like, like, he literally came out, got on the mic first thing, and I'm on the headset with you guys. I'm like, oh, oh, this guy. <laughs> so, yeah. not that I didn't know who he was, but all the, you know, again, that brain disconnect uh, happened there. So No, you're right. It's, he, beca- he definitely transforms into a completely different person when he goes out through that ape. Through, through that curtain. Oh, it's just like Shane uh, Taylor. It's backstage, like, it's backstage like, Brian Johnson and in front of everybody, Brian Johnson is a stark contrast. We've had this um, discussion about Shane Taylor. Almost don't recognize him. Yeah, Shane Taylor comes to that curtain and and you're just like, no, he will murder me. And if you get in the way, yeah, yeah he'll. No, Matt, Matt had the issue where everybody wanted to run into the post exactly where Matt was standing. And Matt didn't have a lot of cord. <laughs> I got this deal where I got like a hard, where, where I'm hardwired mm-hmm. to um to a box that's underneath the ring, mm-hmm. um and my concern is that when I retreat away from the ring post to give the wrestlers space so they can crash into the ring post, that my cable will trip them, and I will cause some debilitating, potentially career-threatening injury to one of these very talented, skilled professional wrestlers and that for me would be the just the worst outcome mm. of anything i can imagine that would break my heart so i try to do everything in my power to not let that happen unfortunately sometimes these wrestlers don't give me much of a choice and i have to like i end up in these positions where i've got to like duck and cover like these guys could not help themselves they're coming like right for the ring post where i'm tethered to and just like they keep coming toward, toward me this one tag match they came at me like three de- separate times sorg and um to the point where I'm apologizing to these guys after the matches. I'm like finding them during the intermission. Like, I'm really sorry I got in your way. I'm really sorry I got in your way. I, I went and apologized to J-Rock. And he's like, I didn't even see you. I didn't even <laughs> know. I, I didn't know anything. I was just wrestling. I'm like, of course you were. You didn't know any, You didn't know I was out there. You're, you're just in the zone. But from my perspective, I'm like, I'm ruining this match. You know, that's, that's the fear. So somewhere between I'm ruining, I'm ruining this match. 
and I injured a wrestler. That's like my man. You carry a lot of stress when zone. you're out there on the camera, don't you? Fear zone for me. I th- I carry those concerns out there with me. Wow. Every show, sword. Wow. Yeah, and but, uh, which he says he's like I'm worried. Out there. He's like I'm worried about hurting <laughs> them, and I I say in his ear, "Don't worry, the wrestlers can take care of themselves." <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think I, I I just think that if if I make a sudden move and like suddenly this cable that is just like sitting on the ground suddenly becomes like a you know like a trip wire that could be a bad outcome. I mean you're someone. you're also you're also you're also filming two wrestlers who have done a bit of TV. So <laughs> they're aware they they're used yeah, to Yeah, which makes me wonder like if they're out there say if Brian Johnson and O'Shea Edwards are out here going like why the hell are these cables right here in my path? They should be somewhere else, you know? So, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. Anyways. Maybe there's a better way. Who knows? Hey, heels update. It's, yeah. good. it's fucking good. <laughs> get to get to <laughs> get to episode three. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't watched episode three. Yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Episode three will change everything for you, sir. Trust I'm me. I'm sure it will. Trust me. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still a sad, sad, depressing show. Six episodes. Of course, in. yeah. My, it, my, so it's about independent wrestling in 2021. It's gonna in, be in southern sad. in southern Georgia, <laughs> in southern Georgia. Add in, yeah. Add in suicide, and and a family left behind. Lovely. And uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, that's your warning for episode three. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. It gets um I, I it, Mike I will I will trigger warning you on this one this one's gonna get harsh on, on episode three but it picks up as well so it's a little bit of shock and awe <laughs> it, at the it's same gonna time. hurt yeah but, it, but yeah, it's, it's fine, it's now, fine. There, now there's a there's a graphic we it, rebound from it we yeah. bounce back that's exactly right so just just with that but but no I I think I think it's it's a it's it gets very very good but also you start asking yourself questions a little bit. Because I, I'm not want to get too much into it, but there's some stuff where like I don't know if that would happen in independent wrestling. Um, but also, <laughs> they do, and this is all. This is good. I think you might have seen this on episode two. Maybe this did happen on three. But I did six episodes of that. So but there's a part where they um, kind of. It's very timely because they kind of do the plane ride from hell. Oh, no. And the plane ride from hell just dropped on Dark Side of the Ring. Oh, and I don't boy. remember the last time I went to a locker room and everybody was talking about a Dark Side of the Ring episode. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and it, when Twitter was and everything else. And obviously we've heard mm-hmm. about what's up with Tommy Dreamer and Ric Flair and some of the fallout there. I didn't watch the last 10 minutes of it, guys. So I'm like, oh, I didn't think the stuff he said was that bad. I just watched the last 10 minutes before the show. Ooh, oh, fuck. Yeah. That is Oof. That is tone, yep, that is great. that is unfortunate and tone deaf. Uh, I, and... I I think I think uh Mr. Dreamer mm-hmm. should change his name to the innovator of silence. Uh, yeah, Tommy Tommy Because Dreamer, he needs to shut the fuck Tommy up. Tommy Dreamer should not have uh such a vocal opinion on on sexual assault victims. Uh, I, that was, I, I'm that sure. Was I'm sure. Problem. Tommy Dreamer has probably dreamed of being associated with Ric Flair his entire life. <laughs> this is my This chance. is this is Oof. not the way he intended Man. it. Yeah, to yeah, be. no, 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 no. And I don't know. And it, it, I mean, I don't know. It, like, and you could say, well, it was edited to say a certain way. And I'm like, no, that was a pretty no, clear, no, 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 no. There's statement. no defense. I and and, and no defense. It's one of those. You know, and, and, I mean, you could say like, oh, okay, it was edited a certain way. It was it was done a certain way, but like, the, 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 just the tone mm-hmm. from Tommy at the end, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I, I and I just sit there and I'm like, Tommy, you can think of these things, but it's 2021 and you do not say that out loud. No, just no, don't, no. Like, have you have I? You know, we 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 say this all the time on this podcast and others, you know, we've got a long way to go. All yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, some, some very small steps have been taken. There is a long, long way to go. Yes. And, but I would, I would have expected someone who, who chooses to be in just the eye of the storm 
doing a, a daily radio show about professional wrestling would have at least a basic understanding of what the of what the moral expectations are in 2021. And and, and uh, guys, just a basic, you know, guys. I hate floor. to tell you, it ain't gonna get better this week. I'm sorry. Did you hear what? But this what, week's what's episode? the? Uh, oh, what's this week? Oh, what? Canyon. Right. Okay. Well, wait, it's wait, not. Wait. It's not going to get better. What? Like, wait, not get better for who? What, yeah, like, for who? Because I, Rick I, Flair. <laughs> well. Oh, really? All right. Okay. I, I didn't know what kind of a role oh. Flair has in this, but. Oh, from what I've heard, he has he said some like real inappropriate inappropriate shit to Canyon when they're in oh. WWE and in WCW. Mm. Okay. And I'm like, J- just mm. and and just, uh, yeah, well, nope. and the problem, just nope, and, and just, the other, the just other... a whole lot of nope. And then the problem is it's being relitigated in 2021, right? So, well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, it's always a problem, then. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So well, I never got a chance to get litigated. Yeah. But yeah, the, yeah the, the, the point is taken. The, uh, I, 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 I want to try to put this in some, I want to find some sort of positive light to put this into. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and the flight attendant kind of does that for uh, on her own part at the end of that uh, episode where mm-hmm. she's talking to me, you know, if I just tell this story and somebody watches it and, and one person changes, you know, because I've shared the story, th- then maybe that will do a little bit of good. Uh, I, I don't think we should look at it necessarily as a bad thing that these kinds of stories are getting out. Um, and, and, and I, and I hope that, you know, the, the one on Canyon is kind of almost has kind of a, a, a similar, outcome too that we're like i'm glad that you know this ugly series of events is out there now in a in a wider forum for and, more people to ingest it a dark side of the ring mm-hmm. <laughs> um in the long run i hope it's doing some good for the business mm-hmm. i just you know i mean it's not like everyone is holding pro wrestling up on this pedestal it's just like you know that the, this you know just like something to be uh, admired or, or virtuous or anything like that. Like we I mean, there's some bad shit going well, on see, in the this thing, business. The thing is, and sometimes some people, people need to be reminded <laughs> that there's a there's bad stuff going on involving you know people who should know better, um, who are still out and about in this in, in the business. So, yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. that's then that works itself out. You go probably hopefully more so these days than than then. And I mean, I mean, we we all know, like I feel like smart fans, whatever you want to call us, we know wrestling backstage is a shit show, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. So I, th- I think you tweeted over the weekend. Your favorite wrestler is probably an asshole. Yes, and I've never, I've never identified with anything more. <laughs> like it is. Yep, I, I, I was running through the list. I'm like, yep, probably. Listen, I am still. Well, for tri- sure tri- and, like... we, and we, and we've gotten this argument on the show, Mike. Right when I bring him up, yeah. I'm like, hey, Chris Jericho is still, without a doubt, my favorite wrestler of all time. Mm-hmm. Chris Irvin's a fucking asshole. Okay, Hulk Hogan is the wrestler that I grew up on in Ultimate Warrior. But go, those guys are fucking assholes and racist and homophobic. Okay, there's a separation there. You know, Tom yeah. Cruise. I love his movies. I probably don't want to have a beer with him. Okay, I, know, I don't even. Love I mean, his like entertainment just like a in general. And if you do find the nice guys, Mark Henry, fucking great guy. Booker T, mm-hmm. fucking great guy. Me and stories from people <laughs> I know. Whoa, 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 whoa. But, but, well, well, here. Go but, ahead, I'll finish up. But okay. in wrestling, in business dealings, like, I don't know. He might have done some other shit. I don't know. He has done. He's been in jail. He talks about it, right? He has a well, history I'm of not, doing no, bad shit. That. But, 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 like, has been, has done right by people, at least in recent years, okay? And doesn't have to, right? Um, and not in a business way, like, like other stuff. Um, so I, that's, that's where that is, you know? I, I, but, 
you know, and maybe more people, you know, people are going to AEW because they like the vibe, the family, you go, maybe less people are assholes there. I don't know. Maybe that's it. You know, but it's a company culture is, uh, is what it feels like, you know, and, and that can be debatable when you go down the list. Sure. But I mean, you can't do a company that that size. I'm just saying Dustin was mentioned in Dark Side of the Ring. So, I mean, th- th- there's bad apples in, in what, everywhere. Wait, 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 are we talking about the plane ride? Yes. About him being a drunken idiot uh, after he got divorced. And sexually harassing. Okay. It that, wasn't as bad as I, Flair, okay. but it was still there. Okay, that I did not catch. Okay, we we'll apologize. Yeah, I did, yeah. I did no, not Dustin, catch that when I was watching the show. Dustin, so, okay. Dustin Hall and Flair were all accused oh, yeah. of sexual misconduct. Okay. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. I mean, yeah. And, 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 and Dustin also verbally harassing his ex wife, too. Yes. Let's you know. Not let's cool. throw that in there as well. Not okay. Not okay. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know where where this ends up with, but it's just a little bit of like. Well, uh, I, I know, I know one place the... it ends up. Uh, try going on WWE shop and searching for Ric Flair. Oh no! I understand you won't see those car shield commercials for a little bit now. So well, well actually, it, it was on. There yeah, was there was one on one tonight. tonight. Oh, yeah. was there? I, uh, there was yeah. something about suspension, but there, it, it, it's one of those like, like it, it, it was probably it, already cycled. Yeah, in it's in the cycle, schedule. and they probably had to like uh, you know make goods and things like that. It would probably cost car shield more money to pull them at this point. Uh, up to a certain like you might still see him for a week or something, right? Uh, yeah. Whatever, whatever that number is gonna be, right? So they're still in the queue on your fight, <laughs> your fight watching, fight TV watching episodes or something. There's, there's a price point where they're willing to accept the yes. backlash. Yes, the yeah, exactly. Okay. That's good to know. Exactly. Um, we should wrap the, this up. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Good. Uh, my, my only thing I wanted to throw on top of this, especially when we talk about like how well we know wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I might be able to say I am friends with, you know, maybe a handful of, of wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I, I would be able to honestly say that. Um, and, and, and I think about all the people over the past year or so uh, who have friends, family members, who have discovered things about friends and family members that has turn them turn their opinions about them completely around to the point where some don't even want to associate with these former friends and i guess now estranged family members and we are here you know and, and we're talking about people that we you know we and others would be very close with you know our family and our friends mm-hmm. the people who we interacted with in person many times and now we're supposed to sit here and pretend that we have any kind of authority or have any kind of insight into what these professional wrestlers are in real life behind the scenes, you know, when the, when all the facade is down and everything like that, when we just, we do not. Um, so if, if they're, if they're nice, if, if they're entertaining when they're out on screen, great. If they're nice to me when, and if we interact on a one-on-one basis, even better. Right. Do I know them? Right. No, you know, right. I don't. There's there's yeah, there's a certain I, I think I saw I think I saw Jordan Grace tweet over the weekend like don't judge a wrestler based on how they are at appearances. They are paid to be nice to you. That is true. <laughs> that is true. But somehow Scott Scott Steiner's still an asshole. I don't get it. Um and 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 I <laughs> The, 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 and this is, I don't know, this will apply to this conversation, but uh, 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 through all this over the last year and, and things, I am not, I am not, I don't believe in throwing people away based on these ideological disagreements. And that includes wrestling and wrestlers, I suppose, too. Um, I mean, until it gets to a certain threshold of that's not okay. That is, I, and 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 that's 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 where I'm at with that. Um, so yeah. I, I believe in seeing their response, and yes. based on their initial response, then potentially throwing them away. But, but, because yeah. Tommy Dreamer's initial tweet didn't exactly cut the mustard. Right. I, I well, mean, we I, all have our own. Our, we all have. Uh, everyone's line is somewhere different you know that's all very a, a very personal thing mm-hmm. um so i feel I, I feel very much kind of of the same mind as you where I, i'm not always i'm not i don't feel like i'm quick to just dismiss people 
uh, based on one or two bad things that they say mm -hmm. because people say stupid stuff. I say oh. stupid stuff on here all the time too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, don't don't get me wrong. I, I don't base I got, it on I got, one or two I got, things. I got six it's yeah, years. It's got, usually it's got to be like a track line, record. Yeah. Habitual line step. I got I yeah, got yeah, yeah, I exactly. got sixteen years of questionable and, and things I've said on this show. So yeah, yeah, like like I remember there was. Oh, this was a couple of years ago. I think Rhea Ripley got caught saying like a a bad slur or something like that. But but like has since recanted and like has donated money. And well, stuff. and, and I'm like, curious: is it something that is like in her in Australia? Is that okay? You know what I mean? It's is this what you know? Some uh, some people came out back from Mexico and they're like, oh, we can't. We say this all the time down here because that's where Mexico's at, right? Uh, Mexico yeah. has not pushed forward, so you're not aware that other places aren't, mm -hmm. and you go to a different or like country. the the James so, Gunn thing. Yeah, the James. Like when James Gunn was like, go from Disney for comments he said years ago. Yeah, and yeah. has since recanted. And I mean, everything, I and mean, it's just like listen, I I think I think most of us have grown up around like you know less cis white guys at least. I uh, have grown up around certain <laughs> uh, 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 atmospheres where certain things have said, and you realize later, oh, that's not a thing I'm supposed to say. But maybe you did at the time because yeah. that's what everybody did around you, you mm -hmm. know. But I yeah. mean, I think people are allowed to grow. Um, yeah, like like if that interview uh, from Tommy Dreamer was back in 2000. Yeah, if it was unearthed from 2004. Then it's like, uh -huh. wow, yeah, that was okay, a shitty sure. thing. And then, he, then maybe and he, 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 can, he can say, "Listen, man, I, 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 that's where my head was then." But, I know but this was good. probably recorded in March. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is within <laughs> like, the last year. So, and when all this yeah. other stuff has happened, and oof, and I don't know, maybe, maybe he felt like he was in a safe. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's also he felt like he was <laughs> in a safe place and could say stuff. And sword, it's like, oh, sword. the cameras are on, He's pal. He's being interviewed for I know, I know, right? So, dark side of yes, the ring. Yes, yes. So I had somebody else brought up the part where uh, they asked Jim Ross, why did why did nobody do anything about Ric Flair? And he's like, well. <laughs> he's yeah. Ric Flair. And, and honestly, I mean, that, uh, that, that's about the most honest, you know, yeah. response. It, it, he, one of the most honest moments of that whole episode he, because yes, it's, yes that is the that is the ugly truth is that there are people who get away with this and there are people who will not get away with this and you yeah. see it in wrestling you see it in pro sports you see it in politics you see it in everyday life where you know if you can reach a certain level you know apparently you can get away with more stuff than other people and this which is, is not the way this is supposed to work and, yeah, um, yeah, and this is a very entertainment business thing, and they are an entertainment business. All right, we've solved all the world problems, I'm sure, and I'm sure I'm gonna. We get still got uh, work to do. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about something light, real quick, before we. Start oh, okay, off. okay. And by light, I mean devastating. Marvel, what if? <laughs> With a uh, killmonger. Oh, jeez, yes. Oh, jeez, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe my favorite episode of the series so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. You say that every it, week. No, I don't. I don't. I was. I wasn't huge on the zombie one. I thought oh, okay. it was fine. I, I, I like thought it. it was fine. Like honestly, if I had to rank them so far, Killmonger and Captain Carter are tied neck and neck, right below that, the child of Star Lord. Okay. But the jeez, Michael Dude, B. Jordan, the 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 of Star Lord. God, this was man. Yeah. God, he is a wonder. Mm -hmm. That episode was just like. Because cause if you saw the Black Panther movie, you heard like his whole deal was that he breaks it. He he infiltrates operations when they're at their weakest mm -hmm. and then takes them over completely. Mm -hmm. Like that was just a class mm -hmm. in how he does what he does. And, and like like he knew Tony was going to be attacked because he intercepted the communique from Obadiah Stane. So he steps in, becomes Tony's best friend infiltrates Stark Industries and uses Stark to infiltrate Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Like my word. Mm -hmm. The mental gymnastics on that were amazing. Well like, it, oh. my my take on it also was like when you watch Black Panther, like there's I think they do a lot to make you uh, I mean there's there's certain points where you sympathize with like him and there's certain points where you mm -hmm. sympathize with 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 Thanos even in his insane thing, but you know you, you see where it's coming from and where the logic went, and you wonder you wonder in the same situation you would have done the same thing, right? Like the bad guys, right. the, the the hey Mick Foley said the best bad guys think they're right, and uh, so 
so I feel like when you watch Black Panther, you have some sympathy for Killmonger and, and like he's right, but he's going a step too far. This was, well, he's coming from that same place, but man, he goes some places and makes you less sympathetic with him on this one. So like that's that, that was my take from that. So on top of everything you said as well. So. Uh, Matt, what, what did you think of this episode? I thought it was really interesting. And I, and I, I kind of liked how like, like you're watching like Killmonger during the episode and like the, I've, I've seen Black Panther. So I'm like, he's a bad guy. All right. But he's like, he's how he appears to be like, kind of like chumming and helpful with Tony for a while. And I'm kind of like, I don't trust him. <laughs> so finally. Um, but you also you kind know, of want it to work. I, there is a part of me that's kind of like, you know what? Maybe, you know, this is what if, Maybe like Killmonger's just gonna be a cool guy in this one, but no, no, not to be. Just like just like um, Thanos was a cool guy in that other one. So and, yeah. and we're so, all joking about so, genocide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like yeah, Killmonger is like that's part of the character. It's like and it goes back to the Black Panther movie too. That he's so charming and you know well written that there you reach certain points and just kind of like man, you know I I kind of I, I see it might be you know. And then you're like, oh, wait, he stabbed him. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. by the way, the one takeaway I think we can all have from What If, it's not good to be Tony Stark. No, no. It he's only died every place. single time he's featured. Oh, has he? I wonder if there's a message behind that, you know, that he's like... Some, yeah, like, one well, of the, mes- shot, the message you know? is, Downey's done. He's yeah, not yeah. coming back. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's the message. <laughs> yeah, sounds mm-hmm. about right. All right. Well, at that point, guys, this is so much fun. We're going to have some even more fun tomorrow night because it's Tuesday night. It is the fully unfettered edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We don't have any guests lined up. We'll probably talk about... Uh, we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot about. to talk about. We, we need to run down this card for basically a pay-per-view happening at AEW this and week. And Sorg, I, so. have to, I have to tell you all you guys about my uh, sabbatical to New Jersey. <laughs> yes. Yes, maybe that'll be a special edition. Maybe we'll do it for Patreon. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, don't thank know. you so much. Mad Mike 483 on the tweets. And also apparently RJ City's Instagram. There you go. What's up, RJ City? Thank you for the shares of that video. And of course, yes. uh mainstream Matt of just pro wrestling news.com. It's very simple, folks. Five minutes every single morning, and I personally will catch you up on the biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling so you can continue to live your busy life. Find us on your podcast app. Talk to your smart speaker. Sign up, subscribe, and it'll be great. I promise. There you go. Thank you, guys, everybody. We'll see you next time. Until then, mayhem out. Please stay tuned for Silk Stocking. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.